today's cocktail is called Tobacco Road and it's based on Mezcal, which is a Mexican uh, spirit. You might know tequila. Mezcal is the grown up brother of tequila. So um, it's made from smoked agaves instead of normal ones like tequila. Uh, you would also need sherry, sina, um, dash of bitter, a bit of salt and some grapefruit peel. So pretty simple. You go for one and a half dash of mezcal, one and a quarter of sina. You see I'm measuring very exactly here. A dash of fino sherry to smooth it up. Some drops of bitter on it. With some ice. I'm just trying to mix it here, which is the only problem with these round ice cubes or ice spheres. Uh, they don't mix very good. And then you take some peel of a grapefruit. And I should have taken a smaller knife and put it on top. Just a bit more for measure. And to spice it up, a couple of grains of salt. And voila, the tobacco road. Smoky. Okay, um, today's two books. Cradle to Cradle and The Upcycle. Both written by William uh, McDonough and Michael Braungart. Or Michael Braungart, he's a German guy. This was the first book they wrote and this is kind of a follow-up book. So they kind of belong together. That's why I'm talking about them in one go. The idea of these two books is to have a different approach in designing products to make them more sustainable. And instead of thinking of, I, I design something and then I need to take care of how to deposit it. They um, promote the idea, I design something and then I design it when it's done doing what it's supposed to do, when it normally would go to waste. Uh, it can become base of something else and it became it can become base of something bigger bad example uh, for example PET bottles um, these plastic drink bottles they are considered good because they can be recycled problem is they are only used two or three times for putting drinks in and then uh, they get recycled in other ways and this is most often these nice fleece pullovers which um, look nice but or microfiber cloth or something like that which is used once and then thrown away into the dustbin and then it's either burned or um, or it ends up in some some dumpsters and it's not something which is the base of a cycle that's the idea behind this upcycle. They bring a lot of examples in these two books. Um, actually pretty good ones. They uh, make a case for building design. They make cases for product design. They make cases for all kind of products and, and situations where the actual product is doing its job during its life cycle. But after that life cycle, it will be used for something bigger and greater and, and growing on that. What's different from the usual Echo stuff is they say we can design great things and we can use technology to create things which grow and form kind of an evolutionary ecosystem. And it's not like the uh, usual approach that you're not allowed to have fun and you have to cease to use a lot of stuff and live in a, in a cave to be eco-friendly. This is designing for abundance, they call it, so that when you design things and they become um, part of a greater cycle, 
that you can actually that the planet can support even more people with it and it's not like the we have to cut down humanity by half and live in caves to to save nature approach there are some interesting points in there which i really like so uh, they say sometimes when you make stuff more eco-friendly you substitute bad things by other things which normally you don't know if they're bad and or they are bad but they're not as heavy regulated so they as an example give for example solder from uh, for um, electric circuits which used to contain lead and now there's this uh, reduction of hazardous substances act the rojas thing um, where you have to get rid of the lead problem is you substitute lead by bismuth and this is equally poisonous but not as heavily regulated as uh, lead and it's a byproduct of lead so you don't get rid of the chinese lead mines because uh, they're the same who produced that bismuth so it's a nice approach to look at the bigger picture it's a nice approach of thinking of what happens to your product after using it. So not like how to how do I get rid of it, but how do I make it food for a next generation product? Um, they're based on the idea of, of ecosystems in, in nature. So when, when a plant dies and decomposes, it becomes food for, for worms and, and, and bugs and stuff like that. So they, they apply the same idea to products that when, when a product is done, it becomes food for new products, different products. And it's an, but it's a cycle and it's not a, you do it once approach. So it's not recycling things one time. It's recycling and recycling and recycling and making bigger things so that instead of um, making worse products or less useful products out of a recycled product, making more useful products out of it. Nice ideas, uh, good read. I definitely recommend both books. The problem I have with the second book, it's kind of publicity for their consulting agency. It's a bit hyped, so it has a foreword by Bill Clinton and it's, it's kind of... A, yeah, kind of a hype cycle now. The first book is Basic Foundations, Good Ideas. Second book is a lot of examples for the good ideas, but also uh, publicity for their consulting agency, which I am I was a bit annoyed by it. I would nonetheless recommend reading both. They are available on the usual outlets. They're about, actually not really cheap, so they're $24 and this one doesn't say but good ideas, read them, follow them, put them. If you're, if you're designing products, follow these ideas and make your products upcyclable. So thanks for watching. Have fun and enjoy the cocktail.